Thrust Systems Go. Clear for liftoff. What's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday, March Madness Thursday. Probably, hopefully, a lot of you, some of you watching, a couple games up top, got us on the screen, get all the information, a couple sweats going on right now, 13 and a half Akron, Akron over here, two minutes left in that game, so I'll be keeping a close eye on that. We got six games in the association, actually seven games, Nate, six games on both sites. Uh, I'm glad what DK and FanDuel did. All six games locked within two hours of each other. Atlanta Phoenix would be an hour and a half later, 10:30 Eastern. Neither site included that included it on the slate, so that's awesome. Six games, both sites. Injury news. I mean, piece of cake for this time of year. Giannis, Claxton, Kobe White, Caruso, pretty much the main ones. Outside of that, not too much to worry about. Uh, I will mention. So Rio is going to be heading to actually probably is on his flight right now, heading to Arizona for the live final. He is going to be, or he already did the slate plan. So check it out. If anything changes, I'll be on that. I'll be on a core for Rio. Boomer's doing showdown content today and tomorrow. Nades is helping out, filling in tomorrow. Ham's helping out a ton. At the end of the day, what I'm trying to say, Rio grinds 24-7 all the time. He's focusing on a million bucks. He's not really going to be in Discord. He's not going to really be doing content. He'll be gone for the weekend, so keep that in mind. Cheer him on. We got you covered, though, at the Nation. And I say it a lot, but a lot of very knowledgeable members Talking guys like Jordan in the Discord chat all the time. Paraby in the Discord chat all the time. Nothing will change there. Still plenty of great content and knowledge in the Discord. If you are a member, you're not in the Discord, I don't know what you're doing. Head over, get in there. You can email info at shippinnation.com to get in if you already are a member, just not in the Discord. And if you're not a member, I don't know what you're going on, what's going on either. Plenty of options. Weekly, monthly, six-month, and annual packages. Baseball starting next week. For, I mean, today, right now, next week, baseball will be going on on your screen this time of day. March Madness will be going on. MMA still going on. PGA, PGA Showdown Hoop will be talking later on today. We'll have content for that. NASCAR, of course, no better time. Join the nation and make sure to use that promo code HOOP15. Get you 15% off any package. Waited long enough to bring you in, my man. Six games today. How you doing on this fine Thursday afternoon? Doing good, doing good. Uh, yeah, exciting times of the year. NHL, uh, second half of the season here. NBA, same thing. But uh, beginning, starting next Thursday, right? Open a day for MLB. We'll talk through that. I love a good MLB. MLB season, obviously, long. But we'll have you covered every single day with uh, all the content there. Um, no better time to join the now. Masters right around the corner as well. PGA, obviously, we just came off the first major of the year there at the Players um, had some good success. A lot of members. Um, I, I saw our guy shipped uh, shipped a couple hundred thousand dollars over there. He gave up, uh, uh, was giving away a lot over on, on X. If you check us out there, I um, believe there's a giveaway up right now. If you uh, like and retweet that tweet there, um, always nice over here at the nation members giving back just the community. I mean, hands down, best community I've been a part of. Um, it, it's, I mean, it's literally a non-toxic, community to, to literally talk about and, and sweat and, and learn from like-minded individuals. I mean, it's an amazing place. So I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad to, to obviously dive into to all these sports, right? March Madness tipped off today. Um, NHL on tap, NBA, obviously MLB coming up. So uh, great time. Obviously, I don't know if there's MMA this weekend, but PGA going on to the Valspar. Um, we got that, got MMA. I mean, great time to be a gambling addict, sports addict over here. Uh, and uh, as the title always says, hey, a lot of stuff. You don't have to play everything right. Gamble responsibly, play within your means, play within your bankroll. But uh, ready to dive in. Six gamer here. Nice little slate. Um, hopefully watch this. Hopefully watch it with the March Madness. Um, and should be a nice, nice weekend of sports for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just a plethora. Like there's two, like you said, you definitely have to stick to your means. What we do, it's a hard world out there. There's a lot of very sharp people in all these sports. You got to pick your, pick your spot. We have you covered in a lot of sports, NASCAR, MMA, PGA, experts giving content there. Like you said, maybe you're not comfortable in all those sports. Each and every sport has its own niche, has its own ownership. You have to do MMA. We talk about it a lot, game theory, et cetera. 
We do have education courses. MLB was just done by Hoop and Tambo yesterday. Definitely make sure to check that out. We have an NBA one, an NFL one. Trying to do more. We're not just giving plays. We want to teach. And also, another thing I'll add on that before we get into the slates, you mentioned bankroll, stick within your means, et cetera. That is why we pride ourselves on the cheapest price in the industry. Content, I think, is the same as all of the other stuff. Again, you can argue that. We have our prices as cheap as possible so you can dedicate more of your money to play in the actual contest to try and get money. You need somewhere to start. You need projections. You need ownership. A little slate plan. If you only have 10 minutes, you can have a ship the nation, look at our tools, slate plan, et cetera, taking all the content, feel good about building a lineup in 10 minutes. And again, you aren't breaking the bank. You can play more money in your contest. So take a lot of pride in that. We are very happy what we created over here. And again, Hoop 15 gets you 15% off those packages as well. Let's get into it though, Nades. Again, six games on tap, all of them locked within two hours of each other. And the biggest news I mentioned, Giannis, Claxton, oops, wrong button right there. Giannis, Claxton, Kobe White, and um, and Alex Caruso. So we'll get there. Other than that, though, looks pretty straightforward slate to me. First game of the night, we do have our partner optimizer solver up right here. And you can see our projections are automatically loaded, as always. Kicking it off the first game of the night, Sacramento Kings, Washington Wizards. Big total in this one, 237.5. Kings 11-point favorites. Injury report in this one, Sasha Vasekikov is questionable in this one. Kevin Herter is out. Washington side, they're pretty thin. Tyus Jones, Bilal Koulibaly, Marvin Bagley all out. Yeah, I mean, Washington definitely one of the most thin teams on the slate. Very high total. The spread is up there. I'll throw it to you in this one to start. Sacramento's going to get some ownership. No about, doubt about that. The Malik Monks, the Keon Ellis will be two of the more popular plays on the slate. I think Fox, Sabonis, Keegan Murray, all very solid plays in their own right. Um, just a broad slate, I guess, one thing. A lot of people are going to go Luka at 12-7 and then figure it out from there. If they don't go there, I think Sabonis will get ownership as well. You definitely can't make both work right now. So I think it's going to be either the Sabonises uh, or the Luka, Sabonis, maybe like a Fox something, or and then they're going to go all the way down for value. So I guess in this game, do you like the pair or like the route of a Sabonis, of a Fox, something like that, and not play Luca? Start with that and then talk about the rest and talk about some value in this game. Yeah, I mean, great game. I mean, the, the slate's pretty much pivoted around two two games, right? Sacramento, Washington, and then Utah, Dallas from a total standpoint. I mean, they're 15, 20 points higher than, than uh, a lot of the games on the slate. Starting with Sacramento, right? Washington ranks pretty much dead last against every position on the court. Um, that's why you're going to see a lot of ownership go to the Sacramento side. I'll kind of break it down. Um, Sabonis, I, I think right now it's Sabonis and Luca is obviously the, clearly the top two spends. Nice thing about that is Luca is 12-7, so they're both going to kind of eat into each other ownership wise. I won't su be surprised when people start building teams um, that Sabonis ends up coming in higher on just because. He's 11 7, or, or he's almost $2,000 cheaper, right? Than, than Luca here. Um, I get it. He does have other, other, um, other players on his team, right? Fox. I think tonight I actually prefer Fox to Sabonis. Fox only played 28 minutes last night due to the blowout there. I'm not worried about the back to back. So I like Fox a ton at, at 9,300. Um, I also see him coming in lower owned than a lot of the other guys, right? The Sabonises the uh, Malik Monks um, of the world on the Sacramento team. So I like Fox is my favorite spend up king here. Um, obviously, Sabonis is a great play, right? Um, none of these kings are really bad plays, in my opinion. It's just Washington, it is a big spread, but these guys are going to get there. Um, I like Keon Ellis. I think he's a great option here. He's going to be starting uh, again here. He does a lot of the um, – does a lot of the dirty work, right, with the blocks and the steals. Um, he had four steals last game. Washington, very, very weak on, on ball handling. Could see uh, uptick in steals and, and blo uh, not blocks, but basically the peripheral stats for a guy that's 4-1 um, in the starting lineup against one of the worst defensive teams in all of basketball. So I think he's good chalk. He's my favorite value play. Really like the spot for Keegan Murray. You saw what Dougie Hauser did um, a couple games ago against the same Washington spot. I assume Keegan Murray is going to be in that similar row to what Dougie Howard did. Sit sit out there, right? If he's hitting his three-pointers, 
he's going to keep chucking. And at 5'8", I think he definitely has a ceiling. You could see a ceiling game out of Keegan Murray here tonight in this spot. So for me, ranking these – Raking these Kings, it's it's going to be Fox is my favorite spend. Keegan Murray is my favorite mid-tier. Keon Ellis, I think, is good chalk to eat in terms of value. It's just his role is solidified. He's in the starting lineup. The price warrants it. Um, everything, just a good opportunity there. Malik Monk getting a ton of ownership at 6'6", coming off the bench. Um, I think I'm going to be a little bit under on, on Monk, Barnes, and uh, Sabonis. Um, can't play all these Kings. Obviously, I, I'm taking a stand against some of them, um, eating the eating the the main chalk there with the value in, in Ellis. Like differentiating a little bit, spending up um, on Fox, and then Keegan Murray. I think we see a ceiling game out of him just with the three point attempts alone. Um, think the role is, is pretty good there, so I like them on the Washington side. Don't have a ton of interest to be honest on this Washington side. Um, I mean, looking at it. Kyle Kuzma would be the only one, but I mean he's eight one. Um, hasn't been playing great. Um, really don't want to mess with the 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 Washington side too much. Maybe a, a Champagne uh, right at, at four nine. He's been playing good minutes. Um, 25, 36, 31, playing pretty good basketball. So um, Champagne probably is my favorite Washington piece, but you don't need to play one um, here. It feels a little like forcing. Good, yeah, good breakdown. A couple things. I, I agree with George. Well, first of all, how many minutes do you think Holmes gets? I think you can pencil him in for mid to low 20s, 23, 24, 25, something like that. And at 5.1K, you can see we don't have it. It's very good value. The center position today, not too strong, to be honest with you. So I don't mind if you wanted to throw Holmes in there, but I think his minutes are capped. High 20s, 27, 28, but I'm expecting more in the low twenties, Beetle Bum says he's scared of a blowout. I definitely am a little worried too at 11. And that's kind of what takes me. I agree with you, Jordan off monk. I mean, he's going to get, I mean, he's going to be one of the highest owned plays on the slate. I think if you need a reason you're trying to avoid a popular play, Jordan pool, shout out to Rio. Uh, I think it was yesterday or two nights ago for that fade, but yeah, the blowout, he can definitely lose run. If this game does get out of hand, he's been playing really good ball, but he still is shooting dependent. A lot. I mean, the usage has been up there. He spent 10 for 19, though, 6 for 12, 6 for 14, 9 for 19. He shot the ball pretty solid, and there's still a lot of range of outcomes. 23 DK points, 43, 28, 20. Price is up there. You can't miss this spot. I do think with law at risk a little bit, um, and he had just – I mean, he has to do something. I think Denny right there at 6.8K is a very solid pivot. I like some of these Wizards because I know a lot of my teams will have a key on. It's a bonus a Fox, a Keegan Murray. Like I want exposure to some of these Kings and probably for almost 125 points. Wizards just can't stop anyone. I do think they can maybe keep like Denny's coming back from injury. Kuzma's coming back. Holmes should start at the five. Like they're getting a little healthier, even though they're still without some of their main pieces, but Kuz is going to run the offense eight one. I think he gets overlooked. Like not met a lot of people are going to go Luca. I don't think many would go like Luca Kuzma. Even you go Sabonis up top. It's kind of hard to go Kuzma there. So I like him in, in this mid-tier. I like Denny a little bit. And then Kispert would be the other one at 5-2. Hope he can make some threes up and down game, small forward, power forward eligibility. But, yeah, definitely a really good game to target. I love Sabonis. His floor-ceiling combo is just so good. Uh, should eat at homes. Keon at 4-1 I think is solid. Um, again, we talk about it a lot. Mo better play on FanDuel than DK because of the stock upside. But with value on this late at 4-1, playing a good bit of minutes. I like him. I do like your call on Fox. I think he's going to be – he's not going to be low-owned, but I do. Again, I think a lot of people are going to go Luka up top, and it is hard to go Luka Fox. So, yeah, great game. I would probably cap it, though. I don't know. I don't know if I'd max once a bonus Fox. Like, if this game stays close, those two can get there together, I think, even though the prices are up there. Only a six-game slate. I don't know any rules or any groupings or anything before we get to this next game uh, for Washington. Yeah, I, I, I think I want to keep it a three Sacramento max. Um, I'm seeing a lot of optimizers four or five, um, just because right Washington pretty much ranks dead last in every category, just about. It, and I mean, it's the highest total tied for the highest total on the slate. So naturally, I mean, everyone. It's not just our projections, right? Everybody's projections are within uh, at least have the similar scope right of, of what the slate is so a lot of people are going to have similar builds if you just run optimizers just run projections and it's going to slam four or five 
of these kings in. It's going to have the monks. It's going to have the Ellis. It's going to have Sabonis, right? It's going to have uh, Harrison Barnes, um, a lot of the similar stuff type style. So if you limit that to three, Washington piece on the other side, right? Like a Champagne, a Kispert, a Denny, um, or, or a Kuzma and just get a totally different build. I don't think that's the craziest route. So I'm looking at, at, at kind of three max Kings in this spot. Yeah. And Michael says Zach will pay off these prices in three quarters. I think if someone will, like, I wouldn't mind if you make a rule, you're only playing like five, 10 line of something like that, at least one Sacramento. One of like Sabonis, Fox, Ellis, Monk, whatever. And then I think someone gets there, even if it is a ball in three quarters, like you said, if it goes uh, or if it stays close for all four quarters, I think you're probably going to want a couple Sacramento pieces and probably a Washington piece too. So yeah, Washington side looks a little lower owned. They're still implied for like the third highest, third most points on the slate up and down game. Yeah. Give me some Danny Coos to get a little different Kisperts as well. We'll keep it going. Next game on the slate. Spent a good bit of time on that game, but it's one of the best games on the slate. Two totals that stand out clear as day. That one at 237 and a half. Jazz Dallas, we're going to talk about at 237 and a half as well. Those are two of the biggest spreads on the slate, though. So a little tricky right there. Next game on the slate, also at 7 p.m. Eastern. New Orleans Pelicans, Orlando Magic. Go from a 238 total to a 207 and a half total. Close spread, though. Pelicans only two and a half point favorites. Both teams are healthy. Matt Ryan's questionable means nothing on the Pelicans. Orlando's healthy. So here we go. We get a close spread, which we like in DFS, a low total, which we don't love. But more importantly than all that, two healthy teams, especially in March, which you don't usually love to see. I mean, healthy teams, low total. I'm not having I don't have interest in this game. My one interest is definitely Zion. I'm good going right back to him. I think he's kind of like in the coos range. I don't think many get to them. Um, and man, like Rio mentioned it a little bit in his write up in the slate plan. He's using, they're using it more as a pick and roll ball handler, which you love to see. I mean, Zion coming downhill off a of screen is always a problem. 8.6 K at a power forward position. That isn't great. He's playing low to mid thirties minutes. The used to just sitting there around 30. I mean, man, his floor ceiling, another one right there. The ceiling, he hasn't completely smashed or shown it. But his floor, 43, 47, 55, 46, 48, 55, 45, all that the past, what, seven, eight games? Like, he feels very safe with a lot of upside. Just all of his buckets, a lot of them right under the rim. Yeah, give me Zion at 8.6K at pretty low ownership in this game. But it's really all I'm seeing. Someone asked earlier about Ingram. I prefer Zion, but I guess him, CJ, or Zion. Make a max one rule. They're low-owned. If you use them, use them to get different. Zion, definitely my favorite, though. What do you see in this one? Yeah, no, um, I think it's a pretty gross game overall. Obviously, I mean, it's a pretty good matchup for Benchero. Um, but, man, 8-8, eight, eight, it's tough price to pay on this slate, um, especially in this total in this game um, when when you got amazing spend-ups in that sack game. Obviously, we'll talk about Luca. You got other spots to go. Um, you got the De'Aaron Fox in a similar range. So I don't think it's a spot to jump on him, but it is a plus matchup for him. Um, Zion, I think, is fine. Just his floor-ceiling combo is good in his role he's got right now. Um, the only other play I might look at on the Orlando side or, or in this game is a mid-tier play, Jalen Suggs, 5'3". Um, he should get right around 30 minutes again here, um, playing decent basketball. He is shooting efficient right now from the, from the floor. Um, but at 5'3", don't think it's the craziest play. Um, outside of that, really a gross game, and I'd be fine playing nobody from this game, to be honest. Yeah, easy. Michael said fade of the night for sure. I, I didn't mention Paulo because I like Zion as a spend more. I like Kuzma more in that range. I like Sabonis, Fox, et cetera. But I think you can use Paulo there. Don't mind your subs call. Like At the end of the day, though, don't really get too many pieces of this game, and you'll be completely fine. And another reason why you'd want to avoid this game or maybe even not load completely up on Sacramento-Washington is if we don't have this Giannis news, Kobe White news, Caruso, like all the news we're waiting on, Claxton is at 8 p.m. Eastern or later, which is an hour after these first games. So if we don't get it, it is worth noting. Um, maybe just save a little more spots than you would. Click the like or take a hike. Yeah, you can talk about that, Nades. <laughs> you pulled it yeah, up. Yeah, our boys tuning out. Yeah, our boys tuning in. Hope, uh, I, I mean, if you're on your flight, safe travels there. Good luck, first off, down in that uh, down in Arizona. 
right? Uh, ship that Millie for for us over here. But I mean, he's tuning in on his travel day, looking to, to ship a live final this weekend. I mean, if he can tune in, he can hit the like button. We can uh, we can give him a little good mojo here uh, for for Rio uh, as he makes his journey down there. So hit the like button, helps us out a ton. Come on, it takes two seconds, y'all. Absolutely appreciate that, Nate. Appreciate that, Rio. Can't wait to see you soon. Go collects in here saying not even 20 likes. Time out. Like button. We appreciate it a bunch. I didn't say hi to people. Maybe that's why. I didn't really give everyone a warm welcome. Richie Smalls, Network, Charlie, Donnie. Already said hi to Pear by and Jordan. Mark's in here. Michael W. Beetle. Jake's in here as well. What's going on, Jake? Jimmy Hendrix in here. Appreciate everyone hanging out. Maybe that's why they didn't have to like button. Not enough. Not a warm enough welcome for him. But yeah, two games down, one. Pretty solid one, Sacramento, Washington. One bad one with the Pelicans and Orlando. We'll keep it rolling though to a very injury, a very important game in terms of injury news. Milwaukee Bucks, Brooklyn Nets. We got two twenty and a half total. Bucks nine and a half point favorites. Giannis is questionable on the Bucks side. Missed last game. Middleton is out today as well. Um, and then we go to the Brooklyn side. Dorian Finney-Smith is out. Claxton's questionable with an illness and missed or wasn't present at shoot around. So huge news here because if there's no Claxton, Dayron Sharp slides in the starting lineup. 4.2K would really like Dayron as value. Like Keon Ellis, 4.1K. He's okay, I guess. Sign me up for Dayron Sharp over him for 100 more any day of the week. Uh, so I'll say that right away. Dayron could be a very strong play. Obviously, on the Bucs side, they're without Middleton. He's resting. Who He's been playing really good ball as of late. It's nice seeing him back, Nades. Giannis, he missed last game. And they're off tomorrow. They're off the next day. And then they play Sunday. Like, he has been dealing with his hammy. He's just been beat up. I mean, that's how Giannis plays. It's going to be a grind to finish the year. Playoffs, championship is obviously what they're wanting. I think it makes a lot of sense to give him a little mini all-star break here. Don't play him today. Have him rest the next two days. They play at home on Sunday, so he doesn't even have to travel and get back at it there. Now, I'm only guessing because if you have to make some guesses in these first two games and we don't have the news, I'll leave some spots open. But, yeah, if Giannis plays, I think he's a good play at 11-4. Um, ownership will be low. People would rather go Luka, probably rather go in the Sabonis. If he's out, Dame, fire him right back up at 9.5K. Brooke at 5.6K. Again, there is no Middleton. Beasley's only 5-1. Bobby Porta's 6-7. Pat Con, like, without Middleton and Giannis, all these guys, a lot of these bucks would be strong plays. Dame would obviously be the biggest beneficiary. Brooklyn side, Dayron Sharp would be the biggest beneficiary if Claxton's out. Yeah, break down this game however you want after that, and if you have any leans on these q -tags. Yeah, I mean, I think we see Claxton sit, and I think that would uh, kind of help what everything you're saying, right, is all speculative. I think if Giannis does – I'll start. If Giannis plays, I think he's a great contrarian spend because he's sandwiched between Sabonis and Luca, who are all going to be – both going to be 30-plus percent. The ownership is just not going to be there for Giannis. And any given night, right, any given Thursday, is there a chance that Giannis outscores both of those guys? Yeah, absolutely. Is it likely? Probably not, but I mean, you're giving me three to one odds that that he can outscore him here. Um, I'll, I'll take that anytime. So at 11-4, I think he'd be a great, great contrarian spend up here in this spot. But I do think he probably sits here, um, especially if Claxton sits. Right? I mean, I think the Bucks still have the talent to to compete here in this game. Um, if Giannis sits this one out, if Claxton misses, right, um, Brooklyn's down a couple pieces. So wouldn't be surprised to see him if he misses. I mean, Dame Lillard becomes a great play. Bobby Portis would become one of my favorite plays. I mean, Portis is playing incredible basketball right now, back-to-back -to -back tough games, right, against Phoenix. Boston, he's playing playing great. They'd lean on him a lot at 6'7", so I'd like him a ton. The Pat Cons, the Malik Beasleys would become great plays, right, in that mid-tier um, at, at 4K and 5'1". Obviously, Brooke Lopez um, would become a great play anytime Giannis misses, right? I, I like to go to right to Portis, but everybody does that too. Always getting a, a low on Brooke Lopez at 5'6 at a center position, I think is good. So I just got to monitor that news. Um, a lot of my roster spots, at, at least probably four or five of them, are probably going to be used up in that first game, right? That Sacramento Washington game, at, at least four, right? Because I want to try probably play three Kings. Um, but there is a case, right, to be maybe, hey, 
everybody's going to be on that game. Wait a little bit because news, if this Milwaukee news shakes out with Giannis sitting, I mean, you could get some good plays here um, on, on Milwaukee in a probably a pretty competitive game um, overall. Brooklyn side, I mean, Lonnie Walker at 3-4, I think, is is a solid value play here. Um, he's been god-awful, but, uh, I mean, he is 3-4. Um, he's probably going to get a little ownership. I mean, outside of that, it's just Daron Sharp would be my favorite play by far. Um, outside of that, I mean, it's just tough for me to play Brooklyn guys. It just feels like they're so deep. They just have so many ball handlers, and they all kind of just cap each other's upside. Um, so, Outside of Sharp, who would be my favorite play in this game, um, I mean, you got to kind of wait for the news on the Milwaukee side, to be honest. Yeah, like this Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson, Bridges, Schroeders. Yeah, Jordan. They just have so Cam many guys. Cam Thomas. Yeah, I think I'd use like probably max one of all four of them. Like, I don't think I even want two, and I don't feel comfortable with any of them. But I wouldn't be surprised if someone gets there. I think Cam, yeah, Cam probably Thomas Dennis Schroeder. Schroeder's yours. I like Dennis. I like Schroeder a little bit, just matchup wise. I mean, point guards against the Bucks. I mean, he's going to play his thirty-four plus minutes here as long as this game stays close. He's six-two. Um, I mean, we got him projected sub five percent right now. I don't hate him. I mean, at the price, but again, it's just like I'm not thrilled to play any of these guys. When Hamilton and I are talking about Brooklyn all season long, it's just man, they just feel like. They're just so deep, right? They just have so many guys that it all seems like they score their kind of floor DraftKings points games, and and here or there you get a fluke um, ceiling performance out of one of them, but it's just not a lottery ticket I want to play tonight. Yeah, no, I agree. That's why I would, I would match one, probably more MME stuff. They're all going to be relatively low on. Cam Thomas is my favorite because he just chucks. I mean, 30, 28, 32, 26, 36, 38 percent usage rate. After coming back from injury, has played at least 30 minutes in all those games. Yeah, I mean, sign me up for a guy that's going to chalk any day of the week for sure. So, yeah, I like that shout, Jordan. He would be my favorite in that. I don't even know if Claxton's the craziest play, if he does play at very low ownership as well. Yeah, the net side is tough, though. I would max one the Bridges, Schroeder, Cam Johnson, Cam Thomas stuff. If we get no Claxton, Dayron Sharp becomes a very good play at 4.2K. By far would be the best value, in my opinion. If Giannis plays, I do think he's sneaky. Ownership wouldn't be there too much. He can get there in three quarters. If he's out, Dane would be one of the top plays. And that's why I like Fox. Like, if we knew, we get this Giannis news right now. Dame is way higher on than Fox. Dame's one of the more popular spends. Maybe that makes Luka Dame a little tougher to work with. Point guard's very strong. And then you get Fox at, yeah, I mean, I know he locks right away. People are going to probably see that, though. Fox is going to be pretty low on there. So, yeah, this Giannis news, this Claxton news. 8 p.m. Eastern is the time that almost all the injury news and the very important news comes out. Trenton Wofford, yeah. Yeah, I think if Claxton misses, I do think min price 3K Trenton Wofford getting back up five minutes would be in play, I think. I would, I would definitely would see how we have him projected, but I don't really see any other viable min price 3K guy. So if it gets you Luca. Dame or something like that, or get you like two spends and then like you're punting, get on a different bill. I don't think that's crazy. I wouldn't need Claxton to miss though. But yeah, I don't think that's a bad shout at mid price. Let's keep it rolling, Nades. Again, appreciate everyone hanging out. We appreciate that like button. Appreciate the subscribe button. And if you're not a member, head over to shippingnation.com, NBA, MLB in a week, NHL, PGA, PGA Showdown, NASCAR, MMA, all the sports. We got you covered. Shippingnation.com, Hoop 15 is the promo code 15% off weekly, monthly, six month or annual packages. Second of two games at 8 p.m. Eastern days. We are halfway through the slate. Chicago Bulls, Houston Rockets, two 18 and a half total Rockets, four point favorites. Again, injury, important injury news at 8 p.m. Eastern in this one on the Chicago side, Caruso and Kobe White are questionable. Kobe White has, um, has missed the past couple games. Whereas Caruso has played, um, yeah, the last three games for Kobe White. Crusoe has been playing through the ankle. And then on the other side, yeah, I mean, Cam Whitmore is out. Nothing has changed on this Houston side. Jalen Green has been a complete freaking monster. So much going on, hosting this, that. All right, here we go. What I do know is this man, Jalen Green, has been a complete monster these past couple of games since Sagoon went down. The baby narrative family said he's doing it for them. 
Ownership's really not going to be there, I don't think, Nate. 8.3K is up there, so I get it. He's going to get some ownership for the run he's been on, but I like 8.3K. And if you don't want to like pay up for a Sabonis, a Fox, some other pieces in that first game, you have Luka to spend for at 8 plus at 8 p.m. Eastern and later. You have Giannis. Then you got plenty of mid-tier options. Fred Van Vliet right here. Booge. Jalen Green. I love him, Ben Thompson. He's going to get ownership, but very strong mid-tier play. Even if Caruso misses, like Io gets a little bump. I'm not sure I want to get there at 6-9. Kobe White, important news, though. Uh, man, this game could be very good. Kobe White, Caruso news, very important for sure. That backcourt. Love Jalen Green, though. Fred Van Vliet, I don't know. I would definitely max one of them. I think Fred comes in lower on, though, so maybe a little interesting pivot. I've talked enough, though. Take this game away. Yeah, I love Jalen Green here. Um, and checking out the slate plan, our, our guy Rio, who's on an absolute tear right now, also loves Jalen Green here. Um, the Bulls ranked bottom two in the league. Um, dead last in catch and shoot. Rio put in in his slate plan here. Um, if Caruso misses, that helps his matchup too. Jalen Green's a man on a tear right now. Now gets a plus matchup here. Three point attempt should be there. Um, if they go in, I mean, you could see another 50 plus here, 60 plus game out of Jalen Green in this spot. I love him at 8 3. His ownership's going to be held in check. Obviously, we've got the other guys. Um, Fox, a little bit more expensive, is going to get significantly more ownership. All those Kings. Um, I love Jalen Green here, my favorite play by far. I think Eamon Thompson is a good spot, a uh, good play as well at 6 3. Um, one guy I do want to mention that I have no interest in is Dylan Brooks. Um, I'm not clicking a chalky Dylan Brooks at 4-4. I mean, this guy basically has a ceiling of 25, it feels like, and in a floor of about two. Um, so I mean, <laughs> I mean, five, if you want too far. Yeah. I mean, if you want to sign up for a chalky Dylan Brooks, I mean, he's a great defender, right? But he's a horrible basketball player, in my opinion. And he's gonna get ownership on this slate just because, right? People want to pay up for Sabonis. People want to pay up for Luca. They want to pay up for the, the Malik Monks, right? You need to save salary somewhere. So Dylan Brooks, um, that's an easy X out of my optimizer. So I won't be playing any Dylan Brooks. I'll tell you that. Um, it's just J J Jalen Green for me in this game, um, and then Amen Thompson. Outside of that, not getting to any of these Bulls. I mean, if you wanted to, Demar Derozan, I think is always fine. He always has a ceiling, but. Just Jalen Green is is my main play in this game for sure. Yeah, I, I'll say I like Vooch on the Chicago side. Um, every, yeah, I mean, ever since Singoon's gone down, playing Jabari at the five, that's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a little problem, I think, against Vooch. Can take him down low. Can can step out. I do like Vooch, even if Kobe White is in, but obviously more usage to go around if he's out. DeRozan, I think I'd want. I would want Kobe White out for sure to get to DeRozan. 8.4K. I still don't like him, though, man. We talked about Kuzma. We talked about Zion. Yeah. Scratch that, Jordan. Unless you want to talk uh, in the in the YouTube comments saying how much you love him, then maybe I'll consider it a bit. But, yeah, not too much more. Dylan Brooks, he's definitely looking at ownership right now, but, like, that's like the Dayron Sharp. If we get Claxton out and Dayron Sharp steps in, Brooks' ownership is going to go down a little bit because it's going to be clear as day. Dayron is the better um, – the better value if he does start in front of him. I like Thompson. Scarred forward eligibility is nice. Going to get some ownership there too. I think Van Bleet's an interesting pivot off of Jalen Green. I wouldn't play both. I'll ride the hot streak with Jalen Green though. And I said I like Vooch a little bit too. Uh, DDR tonight. He's got an okay match. I'm not going to push it. All right. Yeah, no no DDR. Let's save our money on DDR tonight. Two games left, Nades. Two games left. The second biggest total on the slate right there with the Sacramento-Washington Utah, Dallas Mavericks, Utah Jazz, Dallas Mavericks, 237 and a half total. Big boy favorites are Dallas at 14. Nothing on the injury report for Dallas. As far as Utah, though, John Collins is out. So Walker Kessler more than likely starts for him. 5.5K, Walker Kessler. I think he's a very solid play. Again, center is not great. He's one of my favorite center plays on this slate. Gafford, I don't think, is too crazy of a play either. On the other side of the game at center, story of this late, though, it's Luka, 12.7K, still not expensive enough. I mean, Utah, they're not going to be able to slow him down by any means. Now it's, is he going to get his minutes to be able to pay it off? 40 minutes the past two games, 60, 60, and 29 minutes, 20 or 29, 33 minutes, the two prior games, 29 minutes, only 35 DK points. 33 minutes, he did get up to 71 
So I'll just throw it to you on this note, and then you can break down the rest of the game. I'm penciling in. I'm telling you, Luca only plays 29 minutes today. What are you doing with him at 12.7K? Man, I would say in any other matchup, I'd probably be not <laughs> easy fade, but I mean. He could get Utah, there in 29 and easy. Yeah. Utah, I mean, this dude could get there in 20 minutes tonight. I mean, Utah ranks dead last in the entire league in total defense. Dead last against point guards. I mean, and now you're facing the best point guard in the league um, that has a hundred point DK upside. Um, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. Hey, you got to go from a roster construction standpoint. You got to make a decision. Do you want Sabonis or do you want Luca? That's what it's going to come down to realistically uh, because you can't play them both. There's just not enough value. If you do, you're just punted too many spots and you need them both to get you 70 plus, which could they do it tonight? Yeah. But uh, I, I still don't think that that'd be enough, depending on what some of these other mid-tier do uh, plays do on the slate. Luca, fantastic play. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to come on here and tell you, um, right, to, to play Luca here in this spot. Matchup couldn't get any better. Minutes cap is concerned, right? There is still Kyrie there um, as well. But, I mean, all the points are there for Luca to have if, if he wants them tonight. So, fantastic play. My favorite play is actually Daniel Gafford or Derek Lively here in this spot. I mean, this matchup for centers absolutely crushes. I mean, Utah just got absolutely annihilated um, the other night in, in this same spot. I think one of them is going to smash. It's hard to tell because they're kind of splitting minutes down the center. Um, Daniel Gafford at 5'7", I think, would be my preferred just because I think he has a higher ceiling here. His minutes are a little bit more secure than what Lively's are. Uh, but Lively is also 4-1 versus 5-7. If you want a contrarian pivot, especially if the De'Aaron Sharp, or De'Aaron Sharp um, news, obviously Sharp is a bit, much better play. But in tournaments, Lively at 4-1, $100 cheaper in another fantastic matchup here, still going to get you close to 20, 20 minutes, 20 to, to 22 minutes. Don't think it's the craziest pivot. So Lively, Gafford, I think Max to one. But one of those, I think, definitely gets there tonight. Um, I like the spot for those two guys um, quite a bit. And then outside of that, I mean, I just – I don't know on the Utah side. About, I mean – What about Rio's boy, Lori? I feel like every time I'm on a freaking show with Rio, he's doing stroking Lori. I mean, P Lori, PJ. let me see. I think PJ Washington. Yeah, I think PJ Washington is fine. I mean, Laurie Marketin always has a ceiling. It's just, man, 8K. Do I want to pay 8K for Laurie Marketin when I can play um, a Jalen Green at 8 3, right? Different position. But I mean, I think I'd much rather play a Jalen Green to Kuzma's be honest. right there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Kuzma. Yeah. In that game. So. I'm out on Lori. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, if you guys want to see what the what the Lori Stroker and uh, Mr. Live Final Seat himself is doing, head over and uh, check out his slate plan. You got to be a member though. Sign up there. But uh, outside of this, I mean, Luca, fantastic play. Gafford is probably my favorite play in this game. PJ Washington is fine. Um, I mean, and then a lively pivot in, in tournaments um, that has a ceiling at his four one price point. Um, I think is where I'm looking. Yeah, good breakdown. What's up, Jasmine? What's up, 8Game? Forgot to say hi to you guys last time. Hope you all doing well. I don't mind this, especially if Claxton's in. Like, if you're banking on Claxton being out, you don't you didn't play much value from the first couple games, just say you decided to fade a key on Ellis or something, and you just more value doesn't open up, I think Exxon at 3.8K is totally fine. After 27 minutes last game, mid-teens usage. I don't know if the game gets out of hand, maybe gets a little burn. I'm not quite sure about that. But, yeah, value just in general isn't great on this slate. I'm really hoping we get Dayron Sharp. Otherwise, yeah, you're looking at, like, the Keon Ellis is the Dylan Brooks of the world. Like, uh, we just saw Brooks put up 2.25. I think Exum has a little higher or can put up a little more than that. So, yeah, I don't hate that shout. The more I think about it, though, Luca's definitely going to get ownership. Like, Giannis is there if he plays. Sabonis, Fox, Kuzma, if Giannis doesn't play, Dame's right there, Zion, Jokic will get to this last game. Like all or all these guys coming in at a fraction of the ownership, 14-point spread. I, yeah, I mean, he's definitely a solid play. But right now, if I had to make one team, I think the mid-tier build, or at least just no uh, Luka, is kind of how I'd approach today. And, again, he can put up I 70, though, and, you, and you'd still be fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean – 
Two other value plays in this game. Taylor Horton Tucker, I think, is going to get ownership. I don't love him. Um, and then Derek Jones Jr., if he starts again at the three, at 3,300 in this spot against this Utah team who ranks 30th in the league, uh, I don't think that's the craziest play again. I mean, it's tough for him, right? Uh, but if we don't get other value, right, if like Giannis plays, Claxton plays, I mean, I don't think it's the craziest play. Um, I get it, right? He's not a huge usage guy when you got when you're sharing the court with Kyrie and Luca. Um, but at three three, I mean, if he plays twenty five plus minutes, I don't think it's the craziest play against Utah. So didn't want to bring him up because I do think um, he is a fairly owned value play that does get some ownership. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, man. This value. I hope we get Dayron Sharp. Otherwise, like, <laughs> the value is brutal on the slate. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. It really is not good. But again, Giannis being Q, both backcourts for Chicago, Claxton, like some stuff could open up. But when Dylan Brooks is one of the chalkiest options, yeah, and that's <laughs> like uh, Luke is going to be popular. But yeah, it has to like looking at 30 percent. I think that is probably about what it comes into. And that's not crazy by any means for Luca. So, yeah, I guess not a, not a strong lead to wrap it up in this game, though. Obviously, Luke is a great play. People like Kyrie. 9-4, not really going to get there myself. I prefer, like, the savings to Kuz, the savings um, savings to Kuz, savings to Zion, or Dame if Giannis is out, or Fox right in that range. I do like your max one. Go Just go Gafford Lively. And if you're just plugging Dayron Sharp, assuming he does, like, you want to make sure you have a spot for him and you love your other build, and somehow he's not in, you do have an easy pivot right to Lively at center as well. Minutes are capped, but a good point per minute guy. Talk me into Exum. I like him as a value now. I like Walker Kessler starting. I do like Kessler more than Gafford and Lively, I will say. Just because you're kind of guessing with one of those two. I feel good if Walker gets to start at the five, which I expect him to do. Then, yeah, PJ, power forward eligibility. I think he's fine as well. Going to get some ownership, though. Yeah, no, that's what I like right now. Going through it, and even like those six Ks, Monks in there, even though we didn't love them. Uh, Denny Abdia, like the Keegan Murray's in the high fives, Kispert's, Gafford's at 5'7", Kessler 5'5". Five, five. Like, you know these guys are going to be on the court and actually do something where some of these 3K punts, I mean, there's a lot more unknowns to them. But it does get – when Luca puts up 90, you probably want it. You can eat a 13-piece at 3K. So that's the game we play. But, hey, one game left on the slate. Great job so far, Nades. On an island, 9 p.m. Eastern. Not a great game in terms of DFS for me. Denver Nuggets, New York Knicks, 208 total. Nuggets, nine point favorites. Zeke Naji questionable on Denver means absolutely nothing. OG Ananobi's out for the Knicks. And uh, that means Miles and McBride should start again. Talk about some pretty popular value. Miles McBride, 4.7K, looks to be coming in at some ownership. I mean, I. It's not like 3K by any means. I'm going to call him value because he's at 4.7. But for a low usage guy to get a good bit of ownership, the case can be made where you can have an extra roster spot. You can always make pivots if Giannis is out or whatever it may be. If Caruso is out, et cetera. Like it's the last game of the night. So you have roster flexibility. Point guard, shooting guard eligible. But man, he is looking at ownership. The dude's going to play 40 minutes. So that's always intriguing. But at shooting the ball eight times at 40 minutes at decent ownership. I think you could get away from that chalk a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess I like Dante. I like Josh Hart a little bit. Those are my favorite Knicks. Jokic, I think, is interesting at 12K. I prefer Giannis, though. If he does play, I prefer the Sabonis. I, right now, I prefer Sabonis for the savings. Even prefer, like, Fox and the other stuff in the mid-tier more. Yeah, I don't love this game. In Denver at altitude, low total. I think it plays pretty slow. Either Hart or Dante on the Knicks side. Talk about Miles McBride to start and then, yeah, finish this game off. Curious what you're going to say about him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, last game in the same kind of spot, right? Different matchup, all that thing right now. He's going on the road in um, – but he was just on the road. I mean, he played 47 of 48 minutes. And the dude is 4,700. I get it, right? He got an $800 racing. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. But anytime. Yeah, for sure. I mean, anytime a dude is sub 5K that you know you can pencil him in for basically, I mean, 40 plus minutes, you have to have some interest. I mean, yeah. realistically, uh, with the dual position eligibility, do I love it? No, absolutely not. Um, Dante DiVincenzo, I think I like. 
um, a, a decent amount here too, just the shooter. Um, you know what he's going to do. He's going to be chucking. Um, not having an OG here de definitely helps him. I mean, 16 shot attempts, 13, 12.8.3 attempts. Um, so, he, I mean, he's chucking. He's not shooting great right now um, from the three-point line. I think he's fine. Um, he fits more of the mid-tier build, and that's actually what I was what, what I was doing when when you were talking. Is I unchecked some of those top end spends, right? The Sabonis, the Lucas, um, and saw what the teams kind of look like. And you can build a really nice team with having your lowest spend as a like a, a guy like Keon Ellis, right? Who's just in the best game environment on the slate, right? The role minutes, everything is solidified. What we talked about. You can have a really nice team and, and avoid those top end guys. And if those top end guys get you go for 60 or 65, I mean, you could be totally different than what the field is. So I think that's an interesting route the more I was toying with it. Um, I mean, Aaron Gordon, I think, is fine. Dante DiVincenzo. But outside of that, I mean, yeah, Miles McBride at 4-7, but really don't love this game from a DFS perspective. Um, just one-off fillers if, it, if you land there and you want a late-night hammer, sure. But – Realistically, I'm not building to, to start my lineups with any of these guys. I don't mind uh, who asks, where is it? How do you like Hartenstein? Would you play Hartenstein and, and Hart together? I definitely think you can play those two together. I don't mind Hartenstein because they're going to need a size against Jokic. Like, they're definitely going to need him on the court. I think his, he has more minutes upside than he usually does in his matchups, like 25, 27, 23, 19, 20, 20, 23. I think you could see the 27 minutes. He somehow stays out of trap foul trouble, maybe 30. Um, but on the other route, like if you stay out of foul trouble, Jokic can attack on the first four four plays of the game, pick up two quick ones, and then the rotation's all out of whack. So center's not great. I think he's fine. And again, if you plug in Hartenstein at least to start your lineups of the night, you'll have a center position to get to sharp if you want to pivot still have a Gafford, like you have a lot of flexibility in that of those other games with Giannis questionable, Claxton questionable, the bull stuff questionable. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I don't love playing centers against Jokic, um, but he's 5.4K in this, on a center position that isn't great and they'll need his size. So yeah, no strong take. I do think you can play Hart and Hartenstein together though, if you like that, but I would max two Knicks, like going into Denver, applied for less than a hundred points, not a great spot by any means for uh for New York. So yeah, mainly it'd be just Dante and Josh Hart for me. I don't what are your thoughts on Jamal Murray before we get on out of here? We like I don't Murray love it Jackson. to be low owned. Yeah, no. I mean I don't love it. I mean at eight four I'd I'd rather play Jalen Green, like I said. I mean I'd rather play Jalen Green for a hundred dollars cheaper or or find the 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 money right the nine hundred dollars to get up to a fox. Um I think Jamal Murray's fine. It's just don't love the spot. New York is still a pretty good defensive team. Obviously, with OG not there, it, it hurts a little bit. But, I, I mean, they are still pretty solid um, overall. Um, so, I not personally for me, but, hey, he always has a ceiling, and, and he's going to be super low on tonight. Yep. Good stuff, Nate. Six games. Got March Madness on right now. NHL slate, NBA slate, PGA Showdown Hoop will be live later. MMA and Marley and I going live tomorrow. NASCAR on Sunday. Oh, baby, that's a lot of money to be made right there, Nades. We'll do our best to help you out. All the content will be up, as always. Members in the Discord always helping out. Pretty much active 24-7. Seems like all the sports, low price, plenty of options. Weekly, monthly, six-month, or annual packages. Want to make it even cheaper? You Make sure to use that code, HOOP15. Gets you 15% off. MLB will be back one week from now, opening day. Come on now, one of the best times of the year. Only thing we're missing is, is free money Sunday, Nades. I love everything about this time of year. Weather's great, etc. No free money Sunday on Sunday is pretty tough. But hey, free money NASCAR. We got that over here now. NBA, MLB always on Sundays as well. Final words for the people, Nades, and they will see you back tomorrow with Ham stepping in for our man Rio. Final words on the slate. Yeah, I'll be back running the uh, running the hosting duties, trying to fill in the footsteps of uh, two greats here in, in, in Mr. Title and uh, Tambo. But nah, it should be a fun slate here tonight. Um, I mean, speak for yourself in terms of the weather. I mean, you're just so spoiled now with that. that with that <laughs> Arizona. I mean, dude, 
Yesterday, I walked into the office, got literally blindsided by about freaking 20 mile an hour winds and 21 degrees. I mean, two weeks ago, I was playing golf on the golf course. Um, I mean, just a typical Wisconsin spring, if you want to call it spring. It's 33 degrees outside with a winter at weather advisory. But, hey, I'm going to go uh, go hang out with some buddies and uh, throw some March Madness up on the television and uh, tip a couple of cold uh, adult beverages back. So it should be fun. should be a good weekend of sports ahead. Um, play within your means. Like always, we got you covered for everything. If you need it, uh, we got we got you over here at the Nation. And uh, cheap is all in rate. Use that promo code HOOP15. Get you 15% off, but uh, I'll see y'all back here tomorrow um, for, for the NBA show tomorrow. Seven games, I believe. There we go. I got to rub it into some of my Wisconsin nights. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, there ain't nobody. Yeah, 80 degrees. Over here, baby. Let's go. That's how you ship it, as Tambo like to says. Have a good one, everybody. Good luck tonight. We'll be back tomorrow. Good stuff, Nades. What the heck is going on? For Nades, for title, myself. <laughs> Be safe. Good luck. Nice computer tweet. Have a good night. Makes it work. <laughs>